Morning, church. When I first moved to West Virginia in 1993, I had a lot of learning to do for a lot of reasons. But one of the things I had to learn was some of the language. Uh, I wasn't always sure it was English. You know, I would ask someone how they were doing, and they would say something like, fair to Midland. And uh, I, I learned what that was eventually. I even say it sometimes to try and confuse Ohioans now. I had to learn um, what a whip stitch was. Anybody know what a whip stitch is? I don't see a lot of hands, but... And then one of my favorites was uh, if I asked someone if they were going to do something, they might reply, Lord willing, and if the crick don't rise. Wasn't really sure what a crick was. I thought it was something you got in your neck, at least in northeastern Ohio where I grew up, that's what it was. You get a crick in your neck. But it was explained to me eventually that uh, it was a creek that a crick was a creek. And so I figured out that Lord willing and if the crick don't rise meant I'll be there if God wants me to be there. And if there's not a flood on my country property that I cannot cross. And that actually happened a few times down there where people couldn't get in because the crick rose. I guess uh, that saying is based on the unpredictability of cricks. Sometimes creeks are high, and sometimes they're low, and sometimes they're not even there. They're dry, right? Some, you know, often creeks are unpredictable. You might even say unreliable. Well, in the Bible area, in the Bible lands, they have creeks too. Now, they don't call them that there. They call them wadis. And they're very similar, except for the fact that they are probably dry much more of the time than, than West Virginia or Ohio creeks are dry. So they are really unreliable in, in that largely desert land. If you're in need, desperate need, of a reliable predictable source of water, a creek or a wadi is certainly not the best choice. You need something you can count on. Uh, you need something that will always be there, that always flows, that is constantly replenished. What you need is a spring. In the seventh chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus comes to Jerusalem. It's feast time in Jerusalem. He habitually came to Jerusalem at such times. In particular, on this occasion, it's a feast called the Feast of Booze. Feast of Booze was a, a week-long festival that was very important to the Jews. Uh, the city would have been full of people for this occasion. And it's very interesting, some of the details about the, the feast, don't have time to go through all of those today, but it, it had a lot of interesting aspects. But one of the things that the feast celebrated was God's provision of water. And so they, they gave thanks for the water and the rains that God had sent. Now that's saying something in that land that has so little water and so little rain but they gave thanks that, that God had provided that he had responded to their request for such blessings and one of the things that was done on each day of the feast was that the priest would go down to the spring of water that fed Jerusalem it was a, a place it was a pool called Siloam the priest would go down there and he would he would have a golden pitcher and he would fill that golden pitcher with water and he would then 
march that water, that pitcher, uh, back up to the temple grounds and pour it out on the altar of sacrifice, his provision, his blessings, and, of course, by implication, asking God to continue to, to give those blessings. So, every day for six days, during this feast, the priest would do this very same thing. And then on the seventh day of the feast, often called the great day, the priest would do this same thing, but he would do it seven times. So seven times he would march down to the spring, he would fill that pitcher with water, seven times he would march back up to the temple and dump it out on the altar while the people celebrated and worshiped. And just sort of an image of water, water everywhere, and we're thankful for it, that kind of thing. I want you to listen to what happens on this particular day in John chapter 7, verse 37, it says this, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. That last part of the phrase in John, when it talks about Jesus being glorified, it's talking about him being crucified. So at the most dramatic moment, of the Feast of Booths, Jesus stands up in the midst of everybody and he says, if you come to me, I will give you living water. In fact, you will become a spring of living water. You might remember that, uh, that the Lord promised the same thing to a woman one time. This woman of poor reputation. Just a few chapters before, John chapter 4, he's beside a well, a spring-fed well up in Samaria. He meets her and he offers her living water. Notice again that Jesus offers living water, not creek water. He promises a spring, not a wadi. And I think that's important. There's something for all of us to think about and get from that. I want you to consider this question this morning. Are you living water? When we were baptized into Christ, not only did we receive the benefits of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for us, we also received a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, a personal gift, an internal gift. God in us. And that's what Jesus promised the woman up in Samaria. And, and that's what he cried out and offered on the last day of that great feast in Jerusalem. So today, let's understand this about the gift that we've received from God. It, it's not a creek. It's not a wadi. It doesn't rise and fall. It's not unpredictable. It's not deceptive. It's not unreliable. Why then do we so often, as Christians, live our lives as if it is? You understand what I'm getting at? Maybe it'll be easier if, to follow if, if I talk as if it's somebody else's problem. Have you ever seen a Christian in their walk that ran hot and cold all the time? And sometimes, you know, they're way up here spiritually, and then other times they're way down there. Sometimes they're 
filled with the Spirit. Spirit rises up within them. You might say sort of like a creek rising. They're on top of the world. And then sometimes the Spirit falls and they dry out spiritually and, and there's nothing there. No life. Like a creek, a dry one. Like a wadi. Jesus, you notice, didn't say anything about a creek, did he? Jesus said, whoever believes in me, out of his heart will flow what? Rivers of living water. Living water. The kind of water that consistently comes forth from a spring. It's always there, never dries up, never disappoints. The, the Jews made a, a great distinction between living water and other water. You know, living water, they said, was water that came directly from God. So if it was rain water, if it was from a spring, if they got it from a river that flowed, that's living water. It was not water that you store up in a jar and you carry around uh, for whenever it's needed. So it's not bottled water. But they made a great distinction, put a lot of importance on, on living water. And Jesus offered and offers living water. Water from God. It's a symbol here of the Spirit of God. John, the writer, helps us out, tells us specifically what Jesus meant. He referred to the Spirit, it says in the text. And so this is not something that ebbs and flows. It's not something that rises and falls, depending on what the circumstances are in the world or our situation. It's a living thing. It's there. It's available. And Jesus stands up and he shouts this offer of living water at this feast where they thanked God for the rains and the water that he had provided them. But you see, they were going to come back the next year do the same thing. This feast took place every year. They were going to come back the next year for the Feast of Booths. Going to have another feast. They were going to worry all throughout the year about getting enough rain. They were going to have to store up what water they had in cisterns in order to be prepared for when the dry times came, which were often, Jesus stands up. He offers a consistent, constant source, a reliable spring. Why is it sometimes as Christians we look for something else? Something that will get us all charged up. You know, something that will raise the spirit in us supposedly some spiritual high that will last only for a time and then it will fall again and we'll have to do something to crank it back up why do we look for satisfaction from creeks and wadis when we can have the spring of god within us as jesus promised it's not a unique problem for us israel struggled with the same issue there's a verse uh, in the prophet Jeremiah that reminds us of this struggle that was ancient. Jeremiah chapter 2. Listen to what God says to the people of Israel in verses 12 and 13. It says, Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that hold no water. God says through the prophet that the basic problem the people had was they relied on something other than him to be the source of their spiritual strength. Now for them it was idols, it was all that stimulating stuff that went on that was involved with idolatry at that time. 
big religious events, full of incredible music and big time performances and a lot of lust and sex on the side, frankly. No doubt they walked away from such things charged up, on fire. Problem was, God was not in it. Same is true today. There are all kinds of things out here calling to us, offering thrills and chills and spiritual highs and closeness to God. God would call them cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water, dry creek beds, unreliable sources. Jesus, on the other hand, offers the real thing. He offers to make us a spring of living water. Water from God. Something that never runs dry, that offers hope and salvation to all who would come into contact with us. And so, today, you know, if you find yourself stuck in that rut, that, that up and down, that hot and cold cycle of spirituality, something isn't right. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You are supposed to flow with the Spirit of God in you all the time. You are not to need spiritual stimulants, artificial ones, and certainly not physical and fleshly stimulants. You're, you're not to need that in order to feel right before your Creator. Something's wrong. If you find yourself in that vicious cycle of up and down, up and down. That's not what the Lord intends to receive when we obey the Gospel. If you've not received that, then, then we're really talking about something you haven't even experienced. That offer is always open. And, and really this... This message is directed to, to we who have received it, but maybe we, we've forsaken it. Let's remember Jesus' awesome offer on this day in Jerusalem and all it can mean for us. Will you pray with me a moment? Holy God, you are so good. We are so privileged to call you Father and to call your Son our, our brother and our Lord. Thank you for the great thing you've offered us in Christ. Help us to celebrate it today and, and be built up and to truly have this spring within us that is attractive to others as well. And they, they will be drawn to you. Pray your blessing on each one here, that you'll help us to live for you this week faithfully and, and show us what we need to be doing. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.